and greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben. Nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844 236 6010 is our number, 844 236 6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today or a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that as well. And if you have questions about the truth, our truth skin health products or skin health questions or formulation questions, ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about, again, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head to my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. We've got blog posts and news stories at all our websites, and you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website or purchase any of the longevity products right off our websites as well. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. That's the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Also want to remind you to take a look at our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Serum. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, wax, silicon, propylene, glycol, water, emulsifier, surfactant, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want ever in our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. We're talking about the female hormone, estrogen. Also, men make estrogen as well. It's so-called female hormone. It shouldn't be because men make estrogen as well as females, as well as women. It isn't uh, associated with pregnancy. I should say it's associated with fertility. It's associated with the growth of the fetus in the womb. However, it is as much a stress hormone, a pro-inflammatory hormone, as it is a female hormone or as it is a a fetal development hormone. It's also a connective tissue stimulating hormone. That's how we got on this whole subject. In the beginning, we're talking about the connective tissue and it turns out that estrogen stimulates the production of connective tissue for better or for worse. It's associated with fibrosis, it's associated with blood clotting, which is a type of blood fibrosis or blood inflammation in addition to uh, inducing the uh, development of the fetus in the womb. Estrogen's growth properties and its fibrosis properties and its excitation properties and its inflammatory properties and its pro-immune properties are supposed to be balanced by progesterone. And this is why I always say, you, uh, for women who are going through menopause, if they want to try hormone replacement therapy, try progesterone first. And you should never be using estrogen without progesterone. They work together. 
Now, these days, physicians, most physicians know that progesterone has to be dispensed with estrogen, but unfortunately, a lot of physicians are under the illusion or, or, or under the delusion that prescription or artificial or pharmacological progesterone is the same thing as progesterone. It is not. In fact, while progesterone is a non-toxic hormone, medroxyprogesterone, which is fake progesterone, which is unfortunately what is, dis what is dispensed many, many times by physicians, is not non-toxic. It is quite toxic, and it can be responsible for a lot of health challenges, including cancer. If you look at your prescription for progesterone, your doctor says, well, I'm going to give you a prescription for progesterone here, and he writes medroxyprogesterone, or he writes Provera, or some other brand name, tell him you want real progesterone. Tell them you want the real deal and see if you can get the progesterone that comes from yam. It's a little bit more effective in my experience than progesterone that comes from, from soy. Most progesterone comes from soy, but uh, if you've got a clever physician or if you've got a clever pharmacist, they'll be using progesterone derived from yam. In any case, you want to make sure that you're using real progesterone if you've been dispensed estrogen. There's also a condition called estrogen dominance, and this can be caused by excess amounts of estrogen that are naturally produced. Excess amounts of estrogen that are naturally produced as opposed to progesterone, or it can be caused by what are called xenoestrogens, foreign estrogens, fake estrogens, because estrogen has a pro-inflammatory, pro-immune or immune stimulating property. And because of its, uh, its stress hormone activation properties, this condition, estrogen dominance, that is, can cause great misery. And pretty much all immune and inflammatory health challenges, not to mention fibrosis, not to mention blood clotting, cancer, migraine headaches, all of these are likely under conditions of estrogen dominance. PMS issues or premenstrual syndrome or so-called dysmenorrhea, messed up periods, can also be caused by estrogen dominance. Likewise infertility, which affects some one out of three or one out of four couples are infertile, and a lot of that has to do with estrogen dominance or excess amounts of estrogen, and this condition can be exacerbated, as I said, by xenoestrogens, synthetic estrogens, plastics act like xenoestrogens, medications, birth control pills act like xenoestrogens, preservatives, sunscreens act like xenoestrogens, and there's actually estrogenic properties to certain foods. Grains and legumes in particular can have estrogenic properties properties and can function as external estrogens or so-called xenoestrogens. This whole subject of xenoestrogens and foreign estrogens and its relationship to disease and estrogen dominance points out to a points to a very interesting and important subject which we touched upon yesterday and that is this there is no such thing as estrogen. Rather, estrogens are a family of compounds, and there's many, many chemical structures found in nature and industrially produced that act like estrogen. This is where xenoestrogens come in. Xenoestrogens have a chemical structure that is similar to all of the other estrogen children in the estrogen family. There's no one chemical called estrogen. It is a family of maybe 20 plus substances in the body and thousands of substances or at least hundreds of substances found in nature or industrially produced. Yesterday we talked about the three main estrogens. If you've been prescribed estrogen, you've probably been prescribed one of these three main estrogens or a combination thereof. Estradiol, that's the major estrogen in the body. It's the major estrogen of non-pregnant women, I should say. It is the most potent of the estrogens. It's used to treat hot flashes, vaginal dryness, burning, irritation. This is the estrogen that most women will get put on if, uh, if uh, or when they're going through menopause. This is the estrogen the doctors will give you if you have, uh, they suspect osteoporosis or they want to build bone. By the way, that is a dumb, dumb, dumb reason for a doctor to put anybody on estrogen. There's some mythology out there in the world of medicine, in the world of doctoring, among, among numerous myths, that estrogen is somehow going to help you build bone. Nonsense. Horse hockey. Bad biochemistry. Estrogen does not help you build bone. What estrogen does do is it suppresses the breakdown of bone, which is not a great idea. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. We will return right after this break. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on 
on the Bright Side, Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. There's search, the search engines on benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products from brightsideben.com, also criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team if you're entrepreneur, entrepreneurially minded, if you're a business person and you want to start a business but you don't want to deal with inventory and infrastructure and you want to enjoy all the tax benefits, tax write-offs associated with having your own business and being your own boss and making as much or as little money as you like. This is a business you want to know about. Of course, it's also a business where you can help change lives. You can spread the word about how powerful and important a good nutritional supplement program is and make money at the same time. You can do that. You can sign up right off the websites at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. You also want to remind you to check out brightsidehealth.com, brightsidehealth.com. We've got a bunch of new products on there. I've got a vegan protein powder, a coconut powder, which is super tasty and super delicious. You can add that to your smoothies. And we also have a hemp salve in addition to all our enzyme products and uh, pure uh, pure hemp botanicals cbd tincture all at brightsidehealth.com if you haven't checked it out lately you might want to take a look at brightsidehealth.com all right talking estrogen here as it relates to connective tissue and as it relates to disease and as it relates to menopause as it relates to cancer as it relates to autoimmunity and there's a reason why estrogen is associated with all these nasty things and it's not so much estrogen as it is the breakdown products of estrogen if you've been dispensed estrogen for menopause or sometimes they'll give it to you for aging they'll give it to you for osteoporosis which as i was saying is really a dumb reason to take estrogen or a dumb reason to to dispense estrogen we have this idea, the medical model anyway, has this idea that estrogen somehow helps you build bone. Nonsense. It does not. It is a pro-inflammatory substance, and pro-inflammatory substances do not help you build bone. Estrogen does suppress the breakdown of bone, but that's not the same thing as building bone. Bone turnover means that bone is broken down and bone is built up, out with the old, in with the new, and this is a very important part of how the body builds itself up. It breaks down before it builds up, and suppression of breakdown does not help you have strong bones. It may keep your bone intact, but what ends up happening is you end up with fragile, weak bone. Yes, the bone is still there, but it's fragile and weak because the body can't clear out the old stuff. And it can't produce the new stuff if it doesn't clear out the old stuff, which is why bisphosphonates like Fosamax and Boniva and Actinel are not good strategies either, nor is estrogen. Progesterone, on the other hand, does build bone, which is yet another reason to try progesterone first before you go into estrogen. Anyway, there are three main types of estrogen. Estradiol is the, is the primary estrogen in the body. Sometimes they'll actually use estradiol as part of cancer treatment, although ironically, estradiol levels can be associated with, elevated estradiol levels can be associated with cancer. Estradiol is your youth and fertility and feminine, femininity, femininity, that's hard to say, femininity. Estrogen, it's the main estrogen for pharmaceuticals or for, uh, for drug therapy. It's considered to be the most active estrogen. It's the one that performs the most wide ranging of the estrogen effects. And it can actually jack up the adrenal glands. I say focus on your adrenal glands. We talked about this yesterday. If you're dealing with menopausal symptoms, focus on the adrenal glands. If you're dealing with hot flashes, anxiety, jitteriness, jitteriness insomnia, infertility, depression, all of these are the result of adrenal stress. All of these can be the result of metabolites of estrogen and their effects on the adrenal glands. And as I say, Estradiol is the most potent of all the estrogens, and that's the one that's most associated with adrenal stress. Estradiol is also uh, the estrogen that's associated with reproductive function as well as the development of cancers, although ironically, it is also used sometimes in cancer treatment. There's another estrogen called estrone. This is the weakest of the three main estrogens. It's the estrogen of menopause. It's the estrogen of aging. It's the predominant estrogen that shows up in women and in men for that matter as we get older. This is the estrogen that's made in belly fat. 
This is what causes what I call the Santa Claus effect in men. The Santa Claus effect in men is where as males get older and they start to accumulate body fat, they become, they lose their edge, become less, less manly and more jolly. I call it the Santa Claus effect. They become less sexual. They become more estrogenic, more like women, because in body fat, estrone is produced. This is very, very fascinating, the idea that body fat produces hormones. And by the way, body fat also produces inflammatory factors and, and immune factors as well, which means the more body fat you're carrying, the more estrogenic you will be, and that means you're going to be dealing with all of the estrogenic toxicity that we've talked about and will continue to talk about. The more body fat you're carrying, the more likely you are going to be to have inflammatory health issues and pro-immune issues. The more body fat you're carrying, the more likely you're going to be to have autoimmune issues. Body fat is a gland. Body fat is not just ugly to look at or, or unattractive to look at, excess body fat that is, but excess body fat is metabolically active. It produces hormones and it especially produces inflammatory factors. Yet another reason to lose weight. For men, it'll make you more feminine. It'll make you less sexual. It'll make you less virile. It'll make you less fertile. It'll make you weaker. If that's not a reason to lose body fat, I don't know what is. If you can't, if you're dealing with erectile dysfunction and you're carrying body fat, lose, or excess body fat, losing that excess body fat can make you more virile. It can reduce the likelihood of erectile dysfunction. It may be that we don't need Viagra, we just need to lose some body fat. So estrone is the weakest of the estrogens. Like estradiol, it's not, it, it's not, a, a, Here's the problem with estrone. It is the weakest of the estrogens, but it can get turned into estradiol. It can have some of the same problems associated with estradiol, including cancer, including adrenal, adrenal stress, and including fertility and, or, and including excess amount, excess femininity, because estrone can get turned into estradiol. It can get produced from estradiol. This is actually one of the ways the body protects itself from the super potency of estradiol. It will actually convert itself into estrone and estrone will get converted into estradiol. They go back and forth. Because it's weaker than estradiol, it's thought to be safer than estradiol and a lot of doctors will dispense estrone as a prescription. Although because estrone gets converted into estradiol, I'm not sure how effective that will be. Then the third main estrogen is called estriol. This is your pregnancy estrogen. It's, uh, it's the estrogen that's responsible for fetal health. Its main role is the growth of the fetus, but it still has other effects. It's even weaker than estrone, and it's weaker than estradiol. It's the weakest of all of the estrogens. It's made in the liver. It's actually thought to be protective against cancers because it can block the effects of the more carcinogenic estrogens like estradiol and estrone. But again, it can get converted into toxic metabolites itself, so-called catechol estrogens, and we're going to talk about catechol estrogens here in a little bit. But still, there's healthcare, uh, healthcare practitioners, doctors, uh, medical folks who believe that this is the best estrogen to use for HRT. I tend to agree because it has the weakest of the estrogenic effects, although some doctors are dismissive of it because it is so weak. If you're going to go with, uh, with a prescription with HRT, hormone replacement therapy, this is the one, estriol is the one that you want to choose in my opinion. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Have you... Back on the bright side, I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about estrogen or anything we're speaking about here today, autoimmunity, talk estrogen toxicity. If you're on HRT, hormone replacement therapy, you want some ideas on how you can help detoxify estrogen, we can help you. We're going to talk about that in the coming days, how you can clear out estrogen or support clearance of estrogen out of your body. We'll do that in the next uh, next few days. 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang on if you're on hold. We'll get to you in just a moment. A couple of cool stories I want to, uh, want to share with you. From the journal Nature Communications, BP PA replacement found 
also to cause estrogen-related problems. Turns out that BPA, which is a chemical found in plastics, is a xenoestrogen, and it's a big, big problem. Bisphenol A is the technical name. It's used as a softener for plastics. So manufacturers are looking for all kinds of replacements for this stuff, BPA. Well, it turns out that the replacements are also estrogenic. And this highlights the idea that we were talking about earlier in the program, that there are thousands, hundreds, or maybe thousands of different compounds found in nature and found synthetically that act like estrogen. Estrogen is basically a shape. It's not one thing. It's, it's a, a kind of chemical shape, and there's many, many chemicals that have this shape, this chemical structure. So just because something doesn't have BPA in it doesn't, doesn't mean you're off the xenoestrogenic hook. In this case, something called BHPF, which is a BPA replacement, can also cause estrogenic health problems, estrogenic health issues, and that includes cancer and infertility and anxiety and jitteriness and uh, all, kinds of, all kinds of problems, uh, fibrosis and connective tissue disorders, etc. From the journal Movement Disorders, study shows link between microbiome in the gut and Parkinson's disease. Yet another study talking about the importance of the microbiome, the universe of bacteria that live in the gut. This is uh, the connection between the microbiome and Parkinson's disease. Quote, there is growing evidence that there is a connection between Parkinson's disease and the composition of the microbiome in the gut. Unquote, a new study from researchers at the University of Alabama shows Parkinson's disease and medications to treat Parkinson's have distinct effects on the composition of the trillions of bacteria that make up the gut microbiome. I've been saying this for years, folks. The gut, the intestine, is the source of the vast majority of chronic degenerative diseases, and it's largely because of this whole issue of gut bacteria in the microbiome. If you are a loved one or somebody you know is dealing, God forbid, with Parkinson's disease, please, please, please let them know about the microbiome. Please get on your nightly essence. Use fermented food. Make sure you're using sauerkraut and apple cider vinegar with your meals. Use vegetable juices. These are all wonderful strategies for supporting the microbiome. And interestingly, it's also the medications that can destroy the bacteria in the gut. And these are side effects that don't show up on the side effect profile. The side effect profile of drugs will list a bunch of side effects, but it's not going to list all the effects. It may list liver problems or bone problems or mental health issues, but it's not going to tell you about the microbiome. It's not going to tell you about nutritional depletion or nutrient depletion. It's not going to tell you about stressing the liver. If you are on a prescription drug, there is absolutely no way you're not going to be dealing with side effects and toxicity and a screwed up, a screwed up metabolism, and that includes digestive health as well as the microbiome. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Texas. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, Linda, I hung up on you. Um, Linda, call back, and we'll get you. Linda was hanging on the whole program. I apologize, Linda. Call back, I'll get you first up. Brooke in Tampa, welcome to the Bright Side. Brooke. Hello, Hello there, Brooke. Hey, Brooke, what's going on, ma'am? Hey, Ben, I had a, a question. I work in uh, produce, and I get lots of questions about the sugars that are in fruits and vegetables. So my question is two parts. I guess, number one, uh, with fruits and vegetables compared to raw sugar, how is that a different formula like bell peppers, for example? A lot of people want to do bell peppers because it's high in vitamin C, but there's five grams of sugar in it. So how does that work differently than raw sugar in the body? And the second part is, what about honey? How does that work in the body differently than sugar does or does? Okay. Okay. Great question. I get that question a lot. Here's the deal. Sugar is sugar is sugar. Fructose is sugar. Glucose is sugar. They're, they, they don't work the same way, actually. Fructose is handled by the liver primarily, and that means if you have liver problems, you really want to be careful about fructose. But in fruits and vegetables, it's a little bit different. And that's because in fruits and vegetables, you get cofactors that help the body process sugar, especially in vegetables, which have a lot of fiber. Now, you also get some fiber in fruits, of course, but vegetables tend to be fiber rich and vegetables also tend to have more nutrition than fruits. The fruits we choose to eat usually are high in sugar and the medicine in a fruit tends to be located in the peel which most of us don't eat. At least not as much as we eat uh, as we eat vegetables. We eat a vegetable the difference, by the way, between a vegetable and a fruit is the peel. A vegetable doesn't have a peel. Fruits do have a peel. 
Uh, and the medicine tends to be located in the peel area in a fruit, and it tends to be dispersed in a vegetable. Does that make sense? So when you eat a whole vegetable, okay. you're getting all of the nutrients that help your body process the sugar. Nonetheless, you still want to be respectful of the sugar, especially in fruits. I say respect sugar. Don't necessarily avoid it, but respect it. It's not like fruits are totally benign, and if you really want to have sweets from produce or a sweet flavor from produce, go with vegetables because you get a lot more nutrition. There's a lot more medicine in vegetables than there is in fruit. So that's part one of your question. Now, what was the part two? A oh, honey. honey, honey, honey is super sweet. It contains mostly fructose or fruit sugar, uh, although there probably is some glucose in there as well. Uh, but honey has enzymes and honey has B vitamins. So again, it's a whole food, so you're getting some, some nutritional value out of it. It's better than straight sugar. That having been said, if you're a diabetic or you're trying to keep your sugar intake down or uh, you don't want to gain weight or, you know, there's a lot of reasons to stay away from honey and, and fruits and sweet, sweet foods, even if they're natural. If you're going to eat these kinds of foods and enjoy the sweetness, use small amounts. Eat a quarter of a banana. You don't need to eat the whole banana. Eat a quarter quarter of an apple. You don't need the whole apple. Have a small amount of honey, a quarter teaspoonful or half a teaspoonful. What you're looking for is to m make yourself more sensitive to the sweet taste. What happens when we eat a lot of sweet is our sweet taste gets dumbed down and it requires more and more sweetness for us to get that sweet buzz or this, the, the, for us to enjoy the sweet flavor. You can experiment with this yourself by laying off sugar for a couple of days. If you lay off a sugar for a couple of days and then you start eating sugar again and you eat the same amount that you used to eat, it'll be unbearably sweet. And that's where you want to get to. You want to get to the, the place where even a little bit more sugar than you're used to having or a little bit more sweetness than you're used to having becomes unbearable. And you can only do that by limiting or restricting your intake for, uh, for a while or completely laying off of it for a couple of days. Does that answer your question, Brooke? Yeah, it does. Just like okay. I used to heard at parties hundreds of years ago, they used to pass sugar around because people would get high on it because we weren't so accustomed to it in our daily diet. Exactly. When you're not accustomed to it, it becomes intolerable. And by the way, huh. if, you, if you're craving sugar, you absolutely, absolutely have to have some sugar. But you don't want to go into the cakes or the candies, which contain trans fats and, and uh, preservatives and all kinds of chemicals, softeners, etc. Have straight sugar. Try just a spoonful of sugar, a spoonful of fructose in a glass of water. Get yourself some fructose powder. Put two, two, two spoonfuls of fructose in your water and drink maybe half the glass. That will take care of your sugar cravings. You will get a hit of sugar, that's for sure, but it'll take care of your sugar cravings and you won't have to deal with all of the chemicals and all the other uh, the trans fats and hydrogenated fats, all the other nasty things that are in processed, sugary containing foods. It's still not great, but it's better than going with candy bars and, and processed cakes and and snacks, etc. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. I hope that helps, Brooke. I'm going to let you go. I got a bunch of calls here. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here. 844 236 6010 is our number. Good morning, Linda in Texas. What's going on today? Good morning. How are you? I'm doing good. How can we help you today? Yes, I'm calling for my son. He had an ear infection and went to the doctor last week, and they put him on. Levaquin, 750 millig milligrams, and he okay. took those for nine days. Okay. And now he's experiencing bad pain in all of his joints and his hands, legs, Is that arms, right? bottom you know, of his feet. That's not an unusual thing, unfortunately. If you go to the side effect, if you go to the package insert, uh, and, you know, you may not have the package insert, but if you do a, a Google search for the package insert for Levaquin, you'll see that uh, tendon problems, muscle problems, uh, uh, weakness, pain, these are all side effects. I believe they're side effects that are associated with the gut, with the microbiome, the bacteria in the gut, but there's no way to know exactly what the, what's causing the side effects. Nonetheless, they're there. You can have skin problems, you can have headaches, you can have uh, uh, diarrhea all kinds of stomach health issue, even seizure disorders. Levaquin is a very powerful antibiotic. The reason they use it these days is because other antibiotics don't work because of bacterial resistance. So Levaquin is the big guns. Now, it will kill bacteria, of course, if you're dealing with a bacterial infection, but it's really important, Linda, that he starts to restore gut health. If he has any pre-existing digestive problems, this will increase the likelihood of toxicity and side effects from his Levaquin. 
Cameron. In any case, get him on the nightly essence as soon as possible. Have him eating fermented food as soon as possible. If he has food intolerances, gluten intolerance, egg problems, or problems with grains of any kind, or any kind of food allergies, it's extra. It's always important to avoid any foods that cause issues, but it's extra important if he's already compromised from the Levaquin. Focus on the gut is what I'm telling you here. You can also use something like bentonite clay or zeolite or activated charcoal, which by the way, I absolutely love activated charcoal, to help improve the clearance of the Levaquin. And then using things like vitamin C and vitamin E and also something called glutamine powder and selenium, that can help improve detoxification at the level of the liver. So you got a couple of strategies here, three main strategies. Work on the gut, make sure you're having him eliminate problem foods, and then also um, uh, using nutrients that help support liver detoxification and the elimination of the antibiotic out of the body. Does that help you, ma'am? Yes, it does. And what about magnesium? I've it's awesome. Read... It's an awesome, awesome, awesome. One of the all-time great minerals. I mean, I always hate isolating a specific nutrient because they're all important, but magnesium is ridiculously valuable. On top, one of the main reasons it is so valuable is because it's the number one deficiency, mineral deficiency in, in the United States, maybe around the world. Magnesium is found in all green leafy vegetables. This is the best way to get your magnesium. If he does sauerkraut, he'll get magnesium, plus he'll get the probiotic and the fiber for his gut. So have him eating lots of fermented vegetables, particularly sauerkraut. And then also the osteomag is a good source of magnesium. Same with the uh, osteo-FX. So supplemental magnesium as well as magnesium from foods is a great idea always. Okay. okay. How long should he take the activated charcoal and the clay? A week, a couple weeks. You can do it every day. It's just a great detox. You can do it all. Oh, okay. You can do it on a daily basis. Don't do it with your nutrients. Don't do it with your supplements because it'll it'll stick. Your supplements will stick to the charcoal, and that will get okay. cleared out. And by the way, activated charcoal is great for people drinking alcohol, or if you're binging, if you go out, if you're going to go out for a night and, and get a little get a little uh, inebriated. Using <laughs> activated charcoal when you come home can help prevent a hangover. Okay. Okay? Anything all right. else? All right. Take no, care, Linda. That's all. Thanks for Thank calling. Thank you very much. Oh, okay, bye bye. All right, let's go to Brian in Texas. Welcome to the Bright Side, Brian. Good morning. Hey, pharmacist Ben, how are you? I'm doing good. What's going on today? Hey, not much. Uh, I called you actually a couple of weeks ago and I got cut off because you were asking me to ask a question. I'm about losing you, phone. Brian. Brian, I'm losing you. Speak, speak into can the phone. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, much better. Can you speak better? Can you? Go ahead. Can you hear me better? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. We've only got a couple okay. minutes. I had a question, uh, two questions. One I wanted to follow up. I had had you on the phone a couple of weeks ago, and you had to, you had to go because you ran out of time. Okay. The first thing I want to ask you about the estrogen you've been talking about is yeah. uh, does flax seeds cause you to produce estrogen? Because nope. I always thought flax seeds were a superfood, and I put they them are in my smoothie. They are a superfood. They're okay. a superfood. Without a doubt, they're a superfood. They're a great source of protein, great source of vitamin E, great source of fat, and of course, they're wonderful fiber, and I recommend them highly. They are estrogenic in the sense that they contain estrogen-like compounds, specifically something called lignans. You may have heard that term, uh, lignans. Also, essential fatty acids. This is, we're going to talk about this in the coming days. Essential fatty acids can act like estrogen, too. They can help support the production of estrogen, but I wouldn't go so far is to say that uh, flax seeds are estrogen or they stimulate estrogen, it, they, it's more like they act a little bit like, es they have compounds in them that act a little bit like estrogen. Uh, but that's a, that's a good thing because it's not really estrogen, but it's kind of sort of similar to estrogen and it can get you some of the benefits associated with estrogen without the toxicity associated with estrogen. Truly, truly okay. a superfood, Brian, in my opinion. Okay, good to know. And then the other thing, real quick, if I could uh, bother you about the asthma thing. So you, would t you had mentioned a couple of weeks ago talking about not being on med Like I think you related to birth control, but you said that there's no medicine we should be on for an extended period of time forever. Ever, ever, and ever, ever. <clears throat> Does that include like asthma medicine, like Advir? You know what Advir Absolutely. is? Absolutely. Yes, I know what Advir is. Absolutely. Okay. It includes all medication. Now, Advir, and I don't think uh, asthma medicine, I think you use it when you have an asthma attack, right? You're not using it no, every day. Advir, you're supposed to, they say to use Advir in the morning and the night, and it's supposed to help prevent asthma attacks. There's a preventative inhaler. I also have that. I it don't isn't have bad asthma, but I wheeze a lot. No, it's not a good idea at all. Advair uh, is like a steroid type substance, and it's not yeah. a good idea at all, at all. 
and you can tell your doctor's a bonehead and, an, and a lazy healthcare professional if he sticks you on this stuff permanently without trying to figure out what the problem is. You follow what I'm saying? If a medical yeah. professional just puts you on a drug and says, come back and see me six months, and he puts you on the drug again and says, come back and see me six months, he's a lazy medical professional, probably an ignorant medical professional as well. Does that cover a lot of doctors? You bet it does. And that's unfortunate. And I don't, be, I don't mean to be mean to doctors, but I'm an advocate for the patient. I'm here to advocate for the, the poor patient who doesn't understand or doesn't know what these medical professionals are doing to them. And I don't mean to rip on doctors, but if you're a physician or a healthcare professional and you leave a patient on a prescription drug for a long period of time without trying to figure out what the problem is, that's not fair. It's mean-spirited and it's lazy and it just ticks me off. You know, there's no medicine you should be on for, for life and anytime you're on a medication, your number one goal should be to figure out how to get off of it and that mandates and requires figuring out what the problem is. Does that help? I, I don't mean to yes, be sir. too mean there. I, I, I hate when I sound that way, but it just makes me angry. All right, I got to go, Brian. I appreciate it. Thank All you right, so thanks, much. Sir. Take thanks, care, buddy. Sir. Have a good day. All right, let's go to Carol in Washington. Good morning, Carol. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning. It's my daughter. She's a, uh, in her late 40s, and she has a breakfast of water and coffee and a whole wheat toast and <laughs> Almond butter, and by 10 o'clock, she's getting actually shaky. Oh, my goodness. What's with her blood sugar? Get her some pro, get her some, does she like fish? Does she like fish? Fukushima, you don't eat too much of that anymore. Uh, She'd be better off eating the fish from Fukushima than she would eating the the wheat toast and whatever, all the other stuff you said, except for the almond butter is a little good. Get her some fish, or get her some meat, or get her some eggs. Have her eat just protein, just one day, just protein and fat. Get her some of the ultimate EFAs, maybe some coconut oil, some butter, and uh, my bone broth protein. Make her a bone broth protein smoothie, all right? Just one day. Go to brightsidehealth.com, get my bone broth protein, make her a bone broth protein smoothie, crack an egg in there, and uh, and then maybe some flaxseed powder, maybe a touch of Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Have her just do that and watch what happens. And she'll, she won't have any shakes. She'll have more energy, and in the long run, she's going to be building muscle and anti-aging as well. More protein. We should be eating protein for breakfast, folks. This idea of of the bacon, uh, of the toast and the orange juice and the bacon and the standard breakfast that most of us eating is based on marketing. It's based on cheapness. Pancakes are cheap. French toast is cheap. Cereal's ridiculously cheap. And this is why we're encouraged to eat these things. It is a horrible, horrible breakfast. The, The standard American breakfast is a horrible way to start your day. In fact, fasting is better. It's just skipping me, breakfast is better. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you. Can you tell me the difference between L-glutamine and glutamine? They're the same. L, oh. is just a, L is just a prefix, a chemical prefix that refers to the, the shape of the glutamine molecule. It's like hands. It's like uh, gloves. You know, you have a left-hand glove and a right-hand glove, and they look exactly the same, except one is yes. left and one is right. That's what the L and the R is. L is left, R is right. And that's good for sugar cravings, I think you Absolutely. said the other day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. It's good for the liver. It's good for the intestine. It's good for sugar cravings. It's good for brain. It's a bodybuilder and a muscle and an athlete's favorite amino acid. It's the most abundant amino acid. It is amazing stuff. And I know there's some doctors, I won't mention their names, uh, who somehow think it's a bad idea to supplement with glutamine. I say it's a great idea. Half a teaspoonful a day of the powder and don't waste your money on the capsules. I got to go, Carol. We're out of time. I apologize if I left you on hold. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Please check out my Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com and call 866-735-2470 if you want to join The Bright Side Ben team. Have a wonderful, awesome, spectacular, beautiful day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now.